Hello fellow accountants, welcome to learning at igcseaccounts.com. Please do visit our website at www.igcseaccounts.com. If you go to the notes section you'll find the notes that go along with this tutorial and the easiest way to follow the tutorial is to right click over the button that says notes click here and download it onto your desktop which should be much quicker than waiting for it to load up on your web browser. My name is Dean L. Hoss and today we are looking at the double entry system for the asset of stock. Before we go through the debit and credit entries for the asset of stock, it's very very important to understand how the sales and the purchases of stock items affect the bank balance in your double entry T accounts. So if we looked at this particular type of business which sells, in this case, toy trains, then when we purchase those toy trains to sell on to our customers, we consider them to be stock items, but also in modern day accounting terms, we call it inventory. And the way in which you can purchase stock or inventory is either by buying them from your supplier on credit, in which case your supplier becomes a creditor, or we simply buy from our supplier and we pay them directly from our bank. Now of course these toy trains become stock items and they are considered only to be stock items because you buy them with the intention of selling them on to make a profit. So if you bought them for $10, you may sell them for $15 to try and make $5 worth of profit. When you come to sell the toy trains, you're either going to sell them for cash, all right, or you may also sell them for cash and put that money straight into your bank account, in which case the money has gone back into your bank account and hopefully with the profit added on it will be a larger amount than what you originally purchased the toy train for. Of course the other way in which you may make a sale is where you sell on credit. So in the same way that your supplier gave you three months to pay back the debt for supplying the toy trains, if you sold to a customer and you allowed them three months pay you back then you have effectively instead of received the money straight into your business you have created a debtor. The double entry you need to complete to show the purchase of a stock item or a toy train in this case is given to you at the top of the handout and if we purchase the toy trains uh, that we aim to sell on at a profit for $1650 on the 1st of August. Effectively what has left the creditor account, D. Hoover in this case, goes on the credit side and what comes into our business in the form of new toy trains or purchases is going to be shown on the debit side of the T account. So we would put the amount of 1650 on the credit side and we would debit the amount of 1650 on the debit side of the purchases account. And of course we would cross-reference so that we knew where the other half of the, t of the double entry was. So in this case if we were looking at the T account on one page of our ledger um, of purchases and we wanted to know where the other half of the double entry for the purchase of toy trains was located, we would know to look for D. Hoover's account on the next few pages, if you like, of our ledger account. If we were looking at the purchase of stock items for cash, the T account entries would be only very slightly different. Here in this example we can see that on the 2nd of August we purchased some goods or inventory or stock for $220. So we would show the out 
in terms of the resource that would be lost or the asset that would be lost would be the payment that we make to buy the toy trains. In this case, $220 would be shown on the credit side of your cash account. And what the business would gain on the debit side coming into the company would be the toy trains that we then use to sell on. And that would be shown on the debit side of your purchases or inventory account as $220 on August the 2nd. And again, we would cross-reference the cash and the purchases or inventory to show where the other half of the T account is located as the chances are that the T accounts will be on different pages of your ledger. So on the 3rd of August the company sells toy trains to the value of $2,250. To be right, who in this case would be considered to be a debtor as they will pay us at a later date. A double entry would simply be recorded as on the sales account a credit item because what leaves our business will be the toy trains. So as a result we would record it on the right hand side of the T account, in this case the sales T account and we would date it on the 3rd of August. What comes into our business is the asset of a debtor. So on the debit side we would record the debtor as being created if you like on August the 3rd and we would cross-reference the two T accounts so that we knew where the other half of the double entry was located. So what happens when customers return goods to us at the business? Well, if the toy train was the wrong colour, for example, was perhaps damaged when being transported by the delivery van, or indeed was simply not as good a quality as the customer would have liked, they are going to return the stock or the inventory into the business, which is why we record the return as a returns inwards. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as sales returns. The double entry for recording sales returns or returns inwards is to credit the debtor account, in this case F high, as the toy trains will be returning to us so that we're going out of the debtor's account and into or back into on the debit side our business in the returns inwards account. In this case the returns value is $290 and it would be dated on the 5th of August with the debtor account referenced in the returns inwards account so that we could find the other half of the double entry in F high's account from returns inwards. The same would apply but obviously in reverse if we were to purchase stock items which weren't up to scratch. In other words, as a company we were not happy with our supplied item of stock. If that's the case then what we would do is we would create a returns outwards account. So we can see here on the 6th of August we bought goods worth $690 and we are going to return those goods out of our business on the credit side of our returns outwards account into the original supplier who is a creditor in this case K Watt. So it goes out of our returns outwards account into the creditor account as it is returned to them and on August the 6th we simply cross-reference the other half of the transaction. So we know that the other half of the double entry is in the returns outwards account and if we're looking at the T account of the returns outwards we would know that the other half of the double entry would be in K Watt account who is a creditor. Thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial useful then please do wait around for the next tutorial to load up on the playlist. Remember you can find interactive quizzes, past papers and mark schemes, 
as well as the handouts at our website www.igcseaccounts.com. If you're studying AS level accounts or A2 level accounts, then please do visit our sister website at www.alevelaccounts.weebly.com.